Hi everyone. Um, I can't believe this is my last video of making I'm making for you. Uh, it's been a lot of fun revisiting some of my favorite stories and reading all of your work and I look forward to reading more of it and your final project uh, in the coming week or two. So Riley covered a lot about the school so I'm just gonna kind of add to that. Um, I'm gonna add to this idea of suspense versus surprise that he discussed. So um, in, in this story, in the school, there's this list of, uh, the, the suspense is kind of how is this going to end, um, who's going to die next, how is this list of deaths going to um, get more and more serious. So you start with the trees, which is kind of innocent, but it goes back to, then you learn that in the past there were snakes, there were mice, there were fish, there were gerbils, um, kind of these mundane things, class animals that die, but then it gets bigger and bigger and more sinister. Um, like the example of the teacher being named Edgar, or and the, the puppy being named after him. So when they say, here, Edgar, come here, Edgar, the teacher said he enjoyed the ambiguity, but it was also really dark, darkly comical because he knew the dog was going to die. So it was kind of his way of facing his own mortality. Um, and so the story, uh, it you know, it, it goes from realism to irrealism or magical realism, or not magical realism, but it, it goes outside the, the scope of realism, as we've been discussing in your assignments last week, where it begins seeming like it's a real story, but a classroom where things happen, and then um, the students start quoting philosophers, right, about the, the final madem, fundamental datum of death, and they start asking him to make love to the teacher. It, you know, it's, it's, it's the teacher projecting these thoughts and this, this depth onto the students that they actually don't yet have. And so the story kind of goes off the rails there in a really fun way as, as the, the narrator tries to confront the idea that we're all going to die. We don't know where people go when they die, and, and the onslaught of death never really stops. And yet, in the end, when a gerbil walks into the room, um, in spite of all that, in spite of the evidence, it's this hopeful moment where they cheer for it and hope that it's going to have a different fate, even though um, the school is kind of a microcosm of all of life, right? Everything does die eventually, even if it doesn't do so um, in such a gruesome or intense way in the story with the two boys dying, the dad getting stabbed, right? Um, where things die to the point of absurdity and it almost becomes comical uh, or does become comical at times, right? Um, so this, you know, the story breaks all the rules, but it's really good, the ending feels inevitable but surprising, right? Um, so you kind of feel like it can only lead to this moment of the gerbil walking in, and that makes it very, very powerful, very funny, very effective, and, and it, you know, the, there's only like five types of stories out there, right? One of them is grappling with like, what happens when we die? Why do people die? And this does that, but it offers a fresh take on it, and you know, it's called the school, the teacher's supposed to teach the, te the students something, but he of course fails to do so, right? So, um, I think it's a good story to leave to leave on to to think about what you learned in this class and what you can continue to learn. Um, and sorry, in the background there, you can hear my husband playing with my daughter. <laughs> um, and just a few things, kind of um, to leave you with in terms of rules that I think about when writing, um, and then kind of the writing life. And so for rules, some things that I go back back to again and again. You might have heard in my videos or my comments is. Um, this idea of introducing your reader to your story, like they're climbing a mountain on a backpack, right? You want to put in enough stuff in the backpack to help that reader go through your story, but not so much that they're weighed down by all the information. So part of world building, part of entering a story is just helping your readers um, learn how to enter your world, know enough about it, move through, right? Um, another thing I think about is, is from film. It's called getting in late, getting out early. Any scene you write, any story you write, ask yourself, how late can I get into this story and how early can I get out of it? Um, often stories go on way too long. They go on about a paragraph or two or a page long, trying to hit on the themes again and again of what's important. And they start way too early as well with a lot of background info you don't really need. So anytime you write a story or a scene, ask yourself, how late can I get in? How early can I get out? Um, and another thing to ask yourself is, what's the question that keeps my readers turning the pages? Um, it's just a plot momentum question. Every page should have something for the reader to look for, and if you have that long line of tension, that plot that we discussed, um, you could hang anything on it, funny dialogue, vivid description, philosophical musings, but it has, like in the school, the plot was just, what's going to die next? What's it going to mean? Right? And that can carry through the story, which is kind of a monologue, you know, telling you what happened, not all actually happening in the present until the end, and it's okay because it has that through line. Um, and endings should be surprising and inevitable at the same time. And another thing a teacher of mine, Ethan Keenan, says about endings is that you should end on feeling, not logic. So your reader should be left with some emotion, not like a puzzle being solved or a punchline or having them to go back to figure out the plot and the wild ending that you had. So kind of that's something I think about 
with beginnings, endings, scenes, things like that. Um, and, um, yeah, and just, um, making the strange familiar and the familiar strange, that's something I talk about a lot. So if you're writing realism, you know, um, find a way to make that world that people have seen before, uh, illuminated in new light. And if you are writing about, you know, a different planet, different world, different country, um, different time period, you could still make that strange world familiar to people, make them see the humanity in it. Um, so those are rules that you can learn. You could break, you know, show, don't tell, but actually sometimes tell if you need to, right? Um, it's important to kind of know those rules and then break them whenever whenever you, you need. But first, you got to have a group of, of some of the basics of writing. Um, but the real the real way to become a better writer, uh, at least in my experience, is, is, is to write, you know? So if you treat writing like a job, not like something that happens when you feel inspired, but if you do it every day, and it was hard to school with school and everything. Um, make a habit of doing it in the morning and the evenings, half an hour, 15 minutes, a thousand words a day, a hundred words a day, whatever works for you. But if you stick to it, like it's something, like it's another class you go to where you don't always want to go, you don't always feel inspired, but you just do it every day, you will get better. Um, read a lot, right? Read the things that inspire you, read the things your friends recommend, read things that are in your world, but also read widely so you're not just reading things in their genre. Um, and uh, find a community. So I hope you found some community here and you found readers that you can talk to and get advice from. Um, that's really helpful as well. And um, just make, make, make pen pals, make lifelong friends that you can exchange your work with. You know, and it's not going to be everybody when you take a class. It's going to be one or two people who really get you and your work and don't want it to be something else. They want it to be the best version that your work can be. Um, and the last thing, because you are in high school, but you are very ambitious, is just have patience, you know? Um... I, you know, I, I went to high school knowing I wanted to be a writer. I went to college knowing I wanted to be a writer. I went to a master's program right after college knowing I wanted to be a writer. And the first time I published a story, it was just after my master's ended. I was about 24, 25 years old. Um, I wrote two full books, spent years, most of my 20s working on two books for years, many drafts, I had many readers, many iterations um, that did not get published, you know, and then I came up with my third book. So, um... It was a long journey and, you know, along the way there were some successes, there were some stories here and there that I published, but really it's just believing in yourself and in the work and that if you do do it every day, you will get better. And if you feel compelled to do it, then you, you have to keep going, um, whether it's your full-time job or a side hobby or just something that is a part of your life in whatever way you feel is, is most valuable. So thank you so much for sharing your work with me. Um, also, please fill out those course evaluations, and um, I just really, you know, I'm grateful that you shared your work, your work with me, and your thoughts on writing with me. It's been a real pleasure to read and revisit um, some of these things. So I wish you the best. Thank you for your for your participation in the class. I've had a wonderful time.